Jesus Christ, this game looks incredible. The color palette is so rich. There are so many more frames of animation. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles all look so great. Oh, it's great to see them like this again. There was a brief period of time from August 15th to November 6th where Sonic was good again, and now we're back to this. All oh, the remixes of the old zones are top notch, and the music for the new zones are so fucking good. Out of those 30 levels, 29 of them were complete garbage. So I'm coming up with and not totally asking for the idea of doing a retrospective on last year's Sonic games, Forces and Mania, I realized that nothing about the community involving the games have changed in the slightest. Mania is praised as the definitive Sonic experience, while Forces is classed as the textbook definition of mediocrity. And while these positions have not changed for people, they have intensified. It is almost impossible to not only acknowledge any shortcomings Mania has, but also to give Forces any credit without everyone you're speaking to going ape shit. Now, while the community's views on these two games hasn't really gone or gone much change, my views most definitely have. If you know me, you know two things about me. One, I'm pretty much the poster child of the Forces Defense Squad. I was at the forefront, backing Forces up before, during, and after release. Number two, I'm not the biggest fan of Classic Sonic. For real, every game has had this nagging issue of not keeping a consistent pace. The platforming challenges and the high octane speed sections felt so disconnected that I'd have to stop and remind myself that what I'm playing is the same game. The only classic game that barely had this issue was CD, and that was only because it completely went against the conventions of Sonic at that point, with the majority of its level design feeling more like a really gimmicky Mario. Now mind you, I enjoyed CD, I really liked it, but it's not exactly what you would expect from Sonic. This being said, when both of these games released, I was having the time of my life. On release, Mania was pretty high up there for me, and Forces were my second favorite Sonic game. Now, however, my opinion of both has diminished quite a bit. Keep in mind, I don't think either game is bad, and I would still rather play Forces over Mania in most cases. However, rather than it being by a long shot, it's by a margin so tiny that even a baby ant's dick couldn't fit in it. Over time, I have consistently not been able to complete a run of Mania without getting bored as hell by the time I reach Mirage Saloon. And I've been noticing more and more how awkward it is to play Forces. Originally, I praised Forces as feeling the best while boosting, even despite the lack of drift. Recently, though, I've seen the light and realized that Colors plays better than the rest of these games. Colors itself as a game turns me off simply due to its level design. I shit you not, there are levels in this game that are literally about standing on buttons and waiting for shit. It's not challenging, it's not involved, and it's especially not fun. You have moments of pure perfection in this game, but mostly, it's just a blocky mess. The worst part is that Forces takes its notes of level design from colors, but in the opposite direction. A lot of this game is just running forward, and while in quick bursts this can be a lot of fun, it just doesn't have the last ability, like the more involved levels of games like Adventure, Unleashed, or sometimes even Shadow. But even when Forces does throw a lot of platforming at you, the way it's designed is definitely more reminiscent of the platforming in Colors, which was handled much more poorly than Generations or Unleashed. Because of this, it was a lot easier to compare Colors, which plays better than all the other boost games, to Forces, which still controls better than most while boosting, but outside of that, feels way off. You can't turn properly in midair, jumping with momentum behind you can be unpredictable if you aren't in the middle of boosting, and the quick step not only moves a bit too far, but also kills your momentum at times. I can still enjoy forces in small play sessions, but it's not something I can play for longer periods of time, and I'm sorry guys, it's the same way for media. As I said before, as with most classic games, the pacing isn't consistent for the majority of these levels. Sometimes you just go super fast and gun it, other times you can platform relatively quickly and sometimes the platforming is so slow you might even have to wait and do nothing for a second or two. The drop dash helps to make it a bit more consistent than past titles and for sure it is a lot of fun to play around with, but I just do not have any drive to play this game for any significant amount of time. Especially when there is a whole host of Sonic games and even more games in general that I enjoy much more and for a longer time frame. It's a nice foundation and some levels I can really go back to and have a great time with, but as a whole, the game isn't for me.
I should probably explain myself, however, as I'm sure most of you hearing about this consistent pace stuff are confused as to why my favorite Sonic games are Shadow and Unleashed. Full disclosure, and this may be just a shortcoming of mine, but this sort of thing only really bothers me within the same level, but it also is dependent on the playthrough. Shadow the Hedgehog, you all know this, you have the neutral missions that take up about 2-5 to five minutes most of the time, while the hero dark missions go from like 5 to sometimes even 15 depending on the stage. These levels don't often hamper you down in a neutral run, so within that mission context, the pacing still stays consistent. But if I go to play a darker hero mission, the pacing slows down, but it consistently slows down across the board. Rather than racing to the finish line, you have an objective, and you have to focus on it, taking up more of your time. As you get better at these missions, the pacing speeds up due to your skill, but it speeds up across the board again, so it can still be enjoyable in each playthrough. Sonic unleashes a bit more to it. Not only do you have the Werehog, which is a stark departure from the pacing of the Hedgehog stages, but you also need to collect medals in order to progress throughout the game, requiring you to methodically search through both the Werehog and Hedgehog stages. Let's talk about the former first. Simply put, Hedgehog and Werehog are two different play styles that have thusly drastically different level design philosophies. And while again this creates a difference in pacing between the two styles, there isn't a difference within them. The Werehog is always a lot slower and the Hedgehog is always crazy fast. This leads into the second inconsistency, metal hunting. It's required to beat the game, but you aren't often doing it at the same time as you're trying to get a new record. There are different ways to play the level, just as missions were in Shadow, as opposed to constantly swapping between these 5 second running sections and these much slower platforming sections. It's not like platforming in Sonic can't work because of this, both Shadow and the boost stages of Unleashed employ platforming quite often. These sections are not only still able to provide challenge, but they're also structured in a way that allows for keeping the same pacing regardless of what pace you're going at. No waiting for barrels, no jump boost stomp tricks necessary, no dumbass button elevators with lasers, just pure, fun platforming that feels like it actually belongs in the game. These games aren't devoid of the issue in every spot. They minimize it heavily. It's not like I hate the idea of Classic Sonic, right? Because Mania 3 and Knuckles all do have some stages that follow this sort of philosophy well, and CD is completely about slowing down to keep a consistent pace. But in general, I feel like it just hasn't been executed too well. Don't even get me started on the first two classics. <sighs> Look, I just don't think these games are as good as I had originally thought. And I'm hoping that the next game we can get can truly deliver. And I mean like, main game. Not Team Sonic Racing. I know that'll be good.